and we're actually ahead of time. Okay. There's a delay anyway, so that's why I, you know, I just start recording a minute early. And I'll just keep my phone next to me in case there's any glitches. So that's why I, um, well, not glitches so much, but just to see okay. people commenting or asking questions and stuff and just to kind of check in and see who's here. So right now we have Joanne Bennett watching with us. It's not even officially one o'clock yet. <laughs> Yeah, well, I have one. I have 12.59 on my watch, so yeah, pretty so efficient. efficient. <laughs> so, yeah, right on time, right? Yeah, but all right, so I know we can wait a couple minutes until people start really coming in or we can just get right into it. Like, I, I trust that it's working and that we sound okay and all that, so. Okay. Um, um, but so I just, so just even to start officially and <laughs> say thank you for coming Diane. Thank um, you for having me Karen. <laughs> so uh, Diane is our expert astrologist. I've known Diane what since 2014 I guess it was the year I was moving from down south to uh, here in Westwood and Diane read my chart in probably April of that year or something and she knew that I wasn't going to be moving anytime soon but I was still kind of like no 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 we're going to move this summer it's going to be great <laughs> and she's like she's very delicate about it and then later on she revealed that she knew I wasn't going anywhere. But that's where it's sort of helpful because um, then you don't you realize that things happen when they're supposed to. Right. You know? And if you have to wait at least you know you have to wait and you're not like why isn't this happening. You yeah. Know? There's a, the delays and the retrogrades are always for a good reason. I'm always happy to refer people to Diane also because they might have questions about things going on in their life or um, whether they're seeking advice from me or even whatever it is. It just, it helps kind of clarify and put things into place. So I, I, I really love having that as a, an additional tool mm -hmm. for navigating life. So I'm, I'm just so happy that you agreed to come on here and uh, talk about all of the craziness that we're experiencing. We're eight, nine months in, nine months in 2020 here, and it's been, you know, quite the ride and all that. So it really has. And I think that um, the beginning of the year, what happened was, um, and it really is all sort of COVID related because on January 12th, 2020, Saturn and Pluto came together for the first time in the exact spot they came together because the Saturn and Pluto come together every 29 years. However, it's a different sign every time. So the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn, 22 degrees Capricorn, hadn't happened for at least 348 years. Wow. And, and so, you know, a Capricorn is challenges, it's restrictions, it's working extra hard, you know, it's against challenges and restrictions to move forward. You know, Pluto is sickness, and you know, it's it's death. It's a lot of times it's not physical death, it's just a death and a rebirth. So the Saturn Pluto conjunction on January 12th kicked off a year of transformation. And that's really what 2020 is about. Wherever that conjunction happened in your chart, that's where you're transforming this year. Fighting challenges, you know, fighting your way through. Um, and it's a year long process. So what started on January 12th really doesn't end until December 21st. That's sort of when the transfer, that is when the transformation is complete. So depending Interesting, on like numerologically too, you know, like the 12 and the 21 and, and January being a one and December being 12, even though I don't, I couldn't tell you what the significance is, it feels significant. <laughs> Just it does, it does. <laughs> and there are no coincidences. So I'm sure right. that has something to do with it. Yeah. Um, also, the conjunction started in January, on January 12th, in the sign of Capricorn. On December 21st of this year, it ends in the sign of Aquarius. The thing that ends this transformation is another conjunction, planet Saturn and the planet Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is a wonderful planet. It's luck, it's expansion, um, it's opportunity. So, you know, when that happens on December 21st, we're actually going to start a new phase. The transformation will be complete. 
So I do have the signs and where the transformation is for each sign, if you want me to go through that. Yeah, but just, you you know things so well, and so, not that you, <laughs> in your world, it's like taken for granted that you just know these terms. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, like sometimes Diane will say to me, oh, well, duh, it's in, it's in this house. Yeah. And, and I, don't, I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> like, I know the significance of that house and that planet and what that means. But in an astrologist like convention, everyone like chuckles and like, you know, ribs each other. Like they know what they're she's saying. So just to what does conjunction mean? It's when two planets come together. Yeah, I'm planet. figuring it's coming together, but a conjunction. Okay. So Saturn and Pluto were both at twenty-two degrees of Capricorn on January twelfth. Okay. That hadn't happened in three hundred and forty eight years at least so there a conjunction is when two planets come together right so the jupiter saturn conjunction in december is at zero degrees aquarius saturn and jupiter will be together conjunct together at zero degrees aquarius and the difference the thing that i was saying the transformation is capricorn and aquarius are two very different signs so after a year of struggle there's going to be um, a new light, a new innovation. It's actually so telling because everybody's going viral, everybody's going on the internet, and Aquarius rules technology. Mm -hmm. So the year of challenge, the transformation, is also a transformation to a more virtual world, a more innovative way of thinking, thinking outside the box. Well, I can't do it this way anymore, so let me think of new ways to do things, and everybody is doing that. Yeah. Uh, from soup to nuts, from school um, to, you know, wearing masks everywhere you go. You know, I mean, everything is a challenge this year. Mm -hmm. And let me just say, 2021 is absolutely beautiful. It's, it's, it's just as good as 2020 was challenging, but we got to get there. Yeah. You know, we, and we still have a few months to go. <laughs> right. And we still have a few months and a couple retrogrades. And I remember seeing some kind of like meme or something or other back in, I think it was in June, it was right when all of the protests were happening and everything like that. And it was, it broke down that like the last time this planet was here was, you know, the, the revolution, you know, and the last time this was this, whatever. And it was basically saying like, holy moly, we're like in the throes of like a really intense <laughs> astrological moment in time absolutely this whole year has been a series of them yeah um, because we've had a lot of retrogrades that we're not usually not used to right um, of course we had our good old mercury retrograde but that was on february 18th of 2020 mm -hmm. so you know what that did that gave us bad communication bad information about the planet. oh that makes sense you know, Mercury went retrograde. We weren't getting what we needed to get. And the the really wild thing is the day that Mercury went to direct was the 10th of March. And right after that, we all went into lockdown. Yeah, that's when the communication got clear. Right. And we just hadn't, we didn't know the seriousness of it or information was being kept from us. And then that was really the beginning of, um, you know, how are we going to handle this? Um, and and just the masks and, and getting and we still didn't get really good information. The funny thing about a Mercury retrograde is um, whatever good information you get during a Mercury retrograde, and that is Mercury retrograde is when Mercury stops its normal transit because normally it goes about two degrees a day. So three times a year it just stops, and we're still moving on Earth. So through a telescope it appears to go backwards, so we call it retrograde. That's when a planet goes backwards. And whatever that planet rules, and Mercury rules communication, transportation, it, it, it rules um, electronics, it rules the media, um, all that stuff, the information we're getting really isn't the good information. It's going backwards. Yeah. So then once it goes direct, it, it hits really hard, and that was March 10th, and then we found out the truth of what we had to do. We all went into lockdown. And it took us a long time to even figure out you know, we had to reverse everything that we had been hearing before. You know, the masks, they told us not to wear them in the beginning, you know. Um, and so the Mercury retrograde, we had to, after it went direct, we had to revamp everything that we thought before that, you know. Um, and we had so much, um, 
you know, information from all sides that was contradictory. Yeah. That it was very confusing and that's what Mercury will do. Right. It'll confuse us. Um, one thing I'll never forget is the O.J. Simpson trial. The murder was committed during a Mercury retrograde. And I said, no, we're never going to find out that we're never going to know the answer to this. Huh. And he was acquitted. And I mean, it was just a big debacle. It was amazing because of all that misinformation. And COVID sort of got off on the wrong foot in that respect. Yeah. You know, and in America's chart, um, America, just so everyone knows, is a cancer. Of course. Using, yeah, using uh, July 4, 1776 as the birth date and Philadelphia, right? As Exactly. Yeah. And I believe the time is probably like exactly when the Declaration of Independence was definite or signed. Or, right. You know. But America is Cancer with Sagittarius rising. So Cancer is home, family, parents, and America as a whole, the family unit is pretty much what we're all about, you know. And then we have Sagittarius rising as a country. So there's a lot of optimism. We're always, you know, we made it to the moon. You know, I mean, we, we want to, you know, shoot our Jupiter bows. Sagittarians, it's really a very lucky country. The Sag is a very lucky sign. So having Sagittarius rising really makes us take take day-to-day -day tasks in a more optimistic way, mm -hmm. you know, as, as a country. You know, and then here we go. America has an Aquarius moon. And that's why we love love to talk about each other and we and we love to to rebel against everything and we ask a lot of questions. It's probably a good balance, you know, because some countries think Americans are very forward and like, why do you share all your information? And you know, but our Aquarius moon just makes us that way. We're very curious. We're we we always question things, which is the rebel and Aquarian. And and you know, so it's a good moon sign to have. However, we can get ourselves in trouble sometimes, you know, with an Aquarius moon, and that is just maybe being too much of a rebel when we shouldn't be, you know. But the Saturn-Pluto conjunction on January 12th was in America's second house. And the second, the second house, house rule. Money. Money. <laughs> sessions, money, values, resources, your spending capacity. It's all about your money, your possessions, and then this little random keyword also goes with the second house, which is self-worth, what we think of ourselves. So that's where the conjunction happened and boom, you know, the economy, we were all worried about people were losing their jobs and Pluto was with Saturn and Pluto makes you dig deep, you know? And it's, so it would make America as a whole dig deep into their money do I really, you know, and Saturn is, is challenge and restriction. So, you know, we had to dig deep to find new ways of doing things, maybe not spending as much money, um, you know, but our economy or our really our money, America, Americans money started a challenge, a transformation in 2020 that won't be over mm -hmm. until December 21st. And when I say over, um, I am very optimistic that by, I just heard this morning that there might be a vaccine November 2nd. Well, nothing's happened until after the 15th high period. November 15th? Because, uh, and I'll talk about that too, Mars is going to go retrograde. Mm -hmm. so, so, but the original conjunction for America happened in its second house. So, you know, we have to dig deep to find out, gee, do I really, but it's going to have a good outcome. Believe it or not, these things uh, it's it's like it, it's tough when it happens, but it teaches you new ways. Like people are going to be much better at managing their finances in 2021 because they were so restricted with them in 2020. Yeah. Um, you know, do I really have? You know, everything you try to do is blocked in 2020. So do I really have to do this? You know, and their people are going to realize that they where they're spending money foolishly or where they're spending money that they didn't have to spend, you know? But gee, I don't really have to go on campus and spend 15,000 a semester. I can learn virtual for six. Yeah, that, my, yeah, my friend just was given that gift of her daughter's dorms being like, never mind, we're not opening. And she's like, that's $13,000 extra. I'm like, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's I don't, $13,000 for sure. You can't go to restaurants now. So what are we gonna do? Let's start cooking. Yeah. You know how much money you save the average Homemade meal is four dollars a plate. The average restaurant meal is thirteen. 
Yeah. So just you know, just by being restricted and challenged with our money this year, um, we're finding new ways of not spending it, which and a lot of people are socking it away because like the sharks, Barbara Corcoran, and they said, put your cash away, and people listen to them, you know. So people aren't spending and in 2021, I think they're they're going to find that they're going to be much better financial um, for themselves. They're going to be advocates for their own financial future. It's, it is a lesson in money. Yeah, I know that that's for me. It's true. I'm not spending as much in my in my business, but I had a business credit card bill that was a little high, so I'm able to kind of shove it over and pay off the debt. <laughs> Right. Faster than, than, you know, paying off what I'm adding. <laughs> so, exactly. exactly. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the economy is, uh, and the only thing I, because the stock market's great. And so I'm like, wow, it was like my husband got the Wall Street Journal today. It was like the stock market was at, at Dow Jones was like 29,000. That's fabulous. So the only thing I can attribute that to is, is, by the way, these are very slow moving planets, Saturn and Pluto. So they're still really close together, mm -hmm. but Jupiter's with them now. So that's going to give like a reprieve. Any, any Jupiter is like luck. Yeah. yeah. Jupiter is a good planet. So even though we're still challenged, I think of Jupiter coming in and, and, and doing things like, okay, you can't evict anybody before the end of the year, mm -hmm. you know? Um, okay. You're getting the credit on your insurance because nobody's driving. <laughs> you know, all the little good little things that have to do with your money, all the little, um, and Jupiter will also, no matter how um, financially strapped you may feel this year, once December 21st comes, Jupiter is gonna be with Saturn and it's gonna give people, you know, like people are saying, okay, I can't pay my rent. I, I'm, I can't be evicted till the end of the year, but what am I gonna do at the end of the year when I owe four months rent? Then what's going to happen then? Right. I, I would say have have a lot of faith and realize that Jupiter is going to make something come around that's going to be okay. You know, landlords aren't going to say on January first, give me four months rent or you're out of here. You know, they're going to make payment plans. There will be hope. A lot of it. You know, there's a lot of reason for hope. No, and and 2020 is trying to take that away from us. But the thing that Saturn wants us to do. Whenever Saturn's involved in your chart strongly, it wants you to pick yourself up by your bootstraps and just keep plugging along. Yeah. It's a journey. It's not a race. And so by the end of the year, um, I I'm very hopeful also on December 21st because the end of this transformation is in Aquarius, that there'll be some kind of innovative, new, unexpected. Aquarius is unexpected. Uranus, the planet that rules Aquarius, brings unexpected things into your life. So I'm ho very hopeful for an innovative, maybe that, that's when they'll get the vaccine um, or there'll be new treatments that'll really turn this thing around. Because I do see us turning around in 2021. Um, the beginning months of 2021 and really the whole year, you don't have this. In 2020, we had, um, of course, our three Mercury retrogrades, our little nuisance friend. Um, we also had a Venus retrograde which was in May and June. And Venus rules relationships. And for America, um, it, it was right, it conjuncted, the Venus retrograde happened right on top of America's Mars. So America has a chart. So America's Mars is 23 degrees Gemini. And Venus went retrograde at 21 Gemini. So that's America's relationships. And that's what I would say, you know, Mars is aggression. It's, I'm not going to take this anymore. It's fight. And I do believe that the protests um, that started, I, I'm not sure if it was May and June, but I think it was. That's when. Yeah, May 25th is when George Floyd was murdered. Okay, so there you go. So that's, that was during a Venus retrograde, a Venus yeah. relationships. Yeah. And so people said, that's it. Our relationship has to change. The Black Lives Matter movement said, our relationship has to change, mm -hmm. right? And we're going to fight for it. We're going to speak up now because Mars was involved. Yeah. And it's an ongoing thing. It's really the retrogrades, if you can believe it, are really for a good reason. After they're over, we've learned something that without it, we move on better. 
Well, I know with like Mercury retrograde, it's, it doesn't have to be like people are like, oh no, Mercury retrograde. It's like, no, it doesn't have to be like that. It's time to like research, review, you know, revisit. It's not all bad. It's just you kind of, once you have that in your mind as a way to navigate what's ahead, at least you're prepared with realistic expectations. I think that I first started the relationship with the landlords at the new place that is yet to open during a retrograde. So I kind of knew from the beginning <laughs> it was going to take a long time. Like Mercury retrograde is like spilling your coffee. Yeah. You know, Mars retrograde is getting burnt when you spill your coffee. Okay. <laughs> because, you know, it's a lot stronger. Um, but, and Venus retrograde is, um, spilling coffee on somebody else and burning them. It's sort of just like, <laughs> it has everything to do with relationships. Right. So if you had, um, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, you know, you probably had a lot of relationship hiccups in May and June, you know, couples that, um, got together for the first time realized they weren't going to work out or couples that have been together for a while, had an argument about something that had been dredging up for a while, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so, but when you come out of it, you have clarity, you, you deal with your issues. And, um, you know, so the Venus retrograde, boom, there we go. We, we only got between March 10th and May 13th before we had another big um, retrograde, which was Venus. And Venus only goes retrograde every two and a half, three years. Um, so it's not something we're used to. Right. You know? And it, I do believe, like, and I'm talking about America's chart now, that that had everything to do with um, just putting a, a, an eye on, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, them, you know, coming out and saying, you know, this isn't right. We have to change our relationship with America. America has to treat us better and we deserve it. And that's true. Yeah. It's you been know? 400 years building. It's a time that's to right. clean that relationship up. <laughs> Right, and it got really hairy at the end of June because Mercury went re retrograde with Venus. So now you have two planets that really are like the soup and nuts of what keep us going, going backwards together. Wow. And so the end of June was very, very tumultuous. Now Venus did go direct on June 26th, but Mercury was still retrograde all the way through the middle of July. Um, and then there's another one coming, another retrograde? Yeah, that, I yeah. think that is our second hump, you mm -hmm. know, that Venus retrograde. And so what's going to happen is we're going to have a Mars retrograde, which is another planet that doesn't go retrograde every year. Um, so when it does... You know, so, Diane, when you look at the astrology stuff, just in general, were you looking ahead at 2020 going, oh, shit? Or, like, or, did, or did you get to 2020 and then look and be like, you know, like is something people were anticipating or... Well, I went to a conference in Baltimore last year and um, everything was about, which was a lot of fun because you have 300 astrologers at a Hilton and everybody knows what you're talking about. <laughs> but I went to a lot of seminars and a lot of workshops and a lot of speeches. And I don't think um, anybody didn't mention the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. Yeah. That's really what is, is driving this challenging year. For America, really driving and challenging here for people, and and wherever it happens in your chart, um, that's where your transformation is. So we have a Mars retrograde, and you know, to finish with America, we have a Mars retrograde that's coming. Actually, I have it written down like everywhere. So Mars is going to go retrograde in Aries now on the 9th of September. So every sign is ruled by a planet. Mm -hmm. so, um, Aries is ruled by Mars, Taurus by Venus, Gemini by Mercury. Um, Mars rules Aries. So Mars is in its home sign of Aries, and it's going to go backwards. And so Mars is new beginnings, moving forward, frustration. Um, it's also, Mars does rule um, explosions, guns, knives, violence, you know, um, it, it does rule a lot of things, you know, what people have to learn is patience, you know, in order, you know, Mars can be very impulsive. Mars rules Aries. Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac. So the Aries. Yeah, and Aries is a bit fiery. Yeah, they're the Ram. They're the Ram. Yeah. Um, real funny side note. My husband has a Dodge Ram that I posted about because he bought it on a new moon in Aries <laughs> three years ago. You're right. Well, Mars is all retrograde in Aries, and he kicked up a stone with the weed whacker and blew out his windshield. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so I said to him, 
your your car is an Aries, <laughs> so be careful. Yeah, right. You know? But um, you know, so the retrograde is going to stop us, and it's really going to sort of stop us in our tracks. We've had what I call, believe it or not, a bit of a reprieve. When well, yeah, this whole summer, I've been feeling that we're in the eye of the storm, and um, I even had someone reach out to me because she was seeing visions of the eye of the storm. She said, "What does it mean?" I'm like, "I think that's just where we're at right now." Like. So yeah, don't don't uh, mistake this calm for the new normal. Like, there's more coming, <laughs> you know. One more hump, one more hump, and that's why 2020 is really um, one of the most challenging years I've ever seen in astrology. Right. <laughs> yeah, for you to say that, it's like, oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> tough. <laughs> it's tough, but we're going to come out on the other end really um, much smarter uh, about a lot of things that mm -hmm. we've been challenged to find new ways to do. Yeah. September 9th, Mars goes retrograde in Aries. Now, in America's chart, that is going to be, it's going to go retrograde in America's fifth house. So that's the way we express ourselves. But it's going to go back to America's fourth house. So America, what? Fourth house. Okay. Fourth house is home, family, immediate environment, parents. So I do think that either there'll be new strictures where we'll be home more. I'm not going to say, I don't see anybody um, just on a practical level shutting down again. No. Because they're fighting that tooth and nail. But I do think that, you know, I'm seeing it already because it's only, it's only seven, six days away from going retrograde. And to put that in perspective, Mars usually stays in a sign for a couple months month and a half, two months, while it's moving normally. Mars is in Aries, the sign of Aries, for six months this year. Hmm. So it's not moving. It's getting ready to go backwards, and it takes it so long to slow down that there are seven-day um, intervals where Mars is at the exact same degree. You know, like Mars... Does that just kind of create heat or, or volatility? Slowing things down. Yeah. It's making people very, very frustrated. Okay. It's, it's just, um, you know, it's people, you know, Aries and Mars are, are when you have a short fuse, you know, sometimes during the year, you know, you might say, oh, that doesn't bother me, you know, and then other times you might get really riled up about it. Well, if you get really riled up about it, you can feel the heat, as you put it, mm -hmm. Mars is involved. Yeah. Okay. Mars is, because when Mars is in your first house, your fuse is shorter. You're frustrated. Why aren't things happening so quickly? You right. know, so Mars and Aries going retrograde is absolutely going to um, slow things down. And Mars is retrograde from September 9th to November 14th. And in October, Mercury is going to go retrograde with it. Okay, so another one of those double whammies, like the Venus and then Mercury on retrograde. It's like walking through glue. Um, one of the things I've already noticed is the universities. Um, can, we're, let's go back to school. Oh, well, we can't quite do it that way. Well, what are we going to do now? We have positive tests. You know, it's all that kind of trying to move forward but not being able to. Yeah. You know, so if everybody just get, you know, just it's nine weeks. It's, it's going to be the end of a very tumultuous, uh, challenging year. But um, Mercury is going to actually go retrograde with Mars from October 15th to November 2nd. So I don't see, when they said this morning, you know, there could be a big breakthrough vaccine, um, they're telling the governors to get ready to distribute and have a plan in place. Well, that's a wonderful idea. They should get that going. But I don't really see the vaccine um, getting legs until after mid-November and into December. Mm -hmm. you know, but I'm hopeful for that. You know, when I hear, oh, we're not going to have a vaccine for a couple of years, I'm very optimistic that December will be a real breakthrough time for turning this thing around, you know. So when Mars goes retrograde um, in September, just get ready for, you know, more of the same sort of, more of, um, okay, I just got to get through these next two and a half, or it's really just two months, about two months, nine weeks of retrograde. Now, it's going to get um, an uptick in October when Mercury goes retrograde with it. Yeah. So that period of time 
from the 14th of October until uh, November 2nd will be especially slow trying if we're trying to move forward. You know, yeah, well, combined with all of the tension leading up to the election too. And the election, um, it's, and Mars is retrograde in Aries. So it's retrograde all the way up to the election after September 19th and even after the election. It's retrograde until the 14th of November. So who knows what, you know, we might not have an outcome right away. You yeah. know, there could be fighting, there could be um, a lot of, of frustration over the election. You know, I did look at Joe Biden and Donald Trump's chart. Unbelievably, you know, the North Node is our destiny in life. It's a placement when you're born. And they both have it in their 10th house of public eye leadership. I mean, that really cracked me up. I couldn't believe that, you know, that they were destined. Your North Node is your destiny in life. So they were destined to be in the public eye, you know. But I honestly have to say, I wouldn't even want to make a prediction. Well, I know you told me that, like me and Diane spoke a couple of days ago, and she said that she wasn't even um, able to make a clear prediction. And if there was, if there was some you know, noteworthy planet placement, it would be like, oh, totally, no doubt about it. Like, what is it, Saturn crossing the midheaven? Exactly. And when George Bush got elected junior, Saturn was on his midheaven. And so you knew he couldn't lose. Those are like the best two and a half years of your life. Yes. Right? And it only happens every like 29 years, right? Right. Absolutely. See? She taught me right, <laughs> something. I don't you. really know Thank astrology you. that well, but I know yeah. that much. Whenever Saturn is on, on the 10th house cusp, which is considered your mid-heaven, um, those are two and a half great years for you. If you get a job offer, you should take it. Usually a lot of people um, get another house or they get a, a new car. I mean, it really is two and a half really good years um, in a life. And so that, was, that was when you told me because of my placement with that, like you knew I wasn't gonna move for at least another six months or something because wherever those things were, it, was it did not Saturn. reflect that. <laughs> Saturn was involved. Yes, yeah. yeah. Saturn is a very, um, you should, it's always good to know where Saturn is in your chart. But I was really hoping you'd have like, when we talked whenever, like a few weeks ago, that you'd have a really clear like, yep, it's definitely gonna be, you know. I can't, not. I don't even want to, but, <laughs> but um, you know, because their charts, um, they have a lot of, every time I said, oh, well, that's good for him, I was like, that's good for him, too. You know, everything sort of balanced out. So I'm not going to make a prediction. I, I'd be afraid to. <laughs> it's too close, you said. It's too close. Yeah, you know, the personality is completely different. We'll see what America's ready for. Yeah. You know? um, Joe Biden has a much more mellow Person. Of course, it'd be hard not to be more mellow, but he does have a much more mellow personality. Um, so it, it will be interesting. Um, uh, what I can say is I don't expect any clear-cut results till um, after November 15th, and there could be a fight because it's Mars retrograde in Aries. So nobody's going easy. You know? Right. And right. it could be reversed because when retrogrades happen, things aren't what they seem. Mm-hmm. So, you know, see what happens on November 14th. But what you think, what you, whatever you think is going to happen, um, which will be interesting to see, whatever you think is going to happen or whatever it seems like happening hap is going to happen at first, say election day, if they say we have results, expect a lot of turnarounds. You know, maybe they'll go back and, you know, things will change. It'll be really interesting to watch. But on a personal level, just take it easy. Just you know, realize that the challenges aren't over yet. Yeah. And it's just what it is, you know, take solace in the fact that it's our last big hump for 2020. And I, I'm very, very hopeful. In January, and this includes the outer planets, which are Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. In January and February of 2021, the, um, except for a little bit of Uranus at the beginning of January, there aren't any retrogrades except for our nuisance Mercury in the end of January into February. Uh, March is, is, there's nothing retrograde in March and there's nothing retrograde until the last four days of April. So March and April, we're gonna be full steam ahead. I mean, 2021, we are gonna be able to move forward. There's so much room for hope. You yeah. Know? And um, 
who also have learned new ways, new innov innovative ways to do things. Right. Because it's going because the conjunction is going to be over. That Saturn Pluto conjunction is going to that transformation is going to be complete December twenty first with the Saturn Jupiter conjunction, and there's going to be more optimism. It's still going to be hard work, but there's going to be optimism. It's almost like going from I can't do this to let's get this done. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's going to be in December 21st. And, I, and I'm very hopeful for an innovative treatment or some kind of vac vaccine that can hopefully turn this thing around. Yeah. I remember that was what you said, like, at the bottom line of all of this is there's hope for 2021. Like, just hang in there. <laughs> have a little bit longer to go. You know, and one other thing that I did think of is um, I had heard that on NPR, like, uh, just a talk about when when we go through life and we have everything that we need and we take for granted the way our lives go, um, we, we always want to be happy. We always say, what do you want out of life? I want happiness. So 2021 is, it, we're going to get back to things, but we're going to actually, because of what we've been through in 2020, what the um, talk was about was that when people sacrifice and you take away from people the things that they're used to having regularly, they they don't want to do without it, but then when they get it again, they're happier. Yeah. So in a way, being restricted like this for a year is really going to make us appreciate life and be happier when it's over. Well, yeah, last night, me and my husband were walking, because we walk every night now, because that's just what we do. That's lovely. And, uh, like, that was something that wasn't a thing, you know, before quarantine. See, look. I know. and like connection to nature and realizing that there's this brook that's only like a few blocks from my house that I like I visit almost every day now and it was there all along and I just never visited and even knew about it. But there's this one tree in our downtown like park area and it's um, does it's cherry blossom whatever tree so but when we were walking through in April. We realized there was a cherry blossom tree and we were like this is amazing and then last night as we're walking through I'm like we would have never known that tree was a cherry blossom tree. Like we never even walked through the park before. So I'm very grateful for like that, you know, that aspect of, of us being forced to slow down and kind of just be in our space and notice the small things. Right. And that's what Pluto does. Yeah. Pluto makes you look and dig deep um, and you find little gems. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Saturn slowed us down and challenged us. And then Pluto said, well, let me look at what I have right around me. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to what you just said. Yeah. People are walking and they're discovering what's in their immediate environment. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's going to sort of change um, the way they look at life in 2021 because they're going, they have learned to appreciate so much just in their immediate environment. Yeah. Like that we're running around all the time. Mm -hmm. I know um, we had two cruises canceled in mm -hmm. 2020, which I'm, I'm glad about. But I said to my husband, you know, there is something to the happiness thing because the next cruise we take, I'm going to be like a little kid again. Yeah. You know, but, it, but taking them every year, you do, maybe you get used to them or you take them for granted. Right. But now when you can get out and do something that's been taken away from you for a long time, it's going to bring you more joy. Yeah. You know, and I just thought that was a nice little silver lining perspective. Totally to the challenges of 20. Right. And then also with the, you know, the, the use of technology and the bringing together of people in a different way, like with these types of calls, you know, like that's been a well, that's know, where we're going. Yeah. surprise. <laughs> yeah. Because Aquarius where this ends is, is technology. It's right. Innovation. So everybody, because they couldn't move forward was what they were trying to do and to find new ways of doing it. And that's where this transformation is trying to take us. And we were talking about this when we spoke, but like the, how I told you, like in January, I was just like in a funk, like, what's the point? Why did I like learn how to teach things online? Like, who cares? Like, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. And what's the point? And, um, and then once, you know, shutdown happened, I was like, oh, that's why I know all this. And you said, even in my chart or even based on what, what was happening, I don't know if it was my chart specifically or just what was happening in the stars, but it made total sense that I was like having that moment where I was like reviewing, yeah. And, and I think, like I said to you before, I, I happen to know you have Aquarius rising. Mm -hmm. So the transformation for you, part of it was in your 12th house mm -hmm. of you fighting your fears 
and doing things in a new way because I was telling you that, you know, Aquarians are a little misunderstood. They have a very shy side to them. <laughs> you know, they seem very rebellious, but Aquarians have a very, have a, have, have a big shyness to them. So if they, you know, they don't always want to be out, you know, in a crowd or anything. And they don't, might not, they might be afraid to go virtual or, you know, fear of the unknown. So the conjunction in your 12th house made you fight your fears because the 12th house is fighting your fears and finding a higher way to do something, you know. And so I really feel that that's a bit of a transformation for you this year. And, and were you also going to go through and with the conjunctions with the signs too? I do. I want to go through the signs and um, just briefly, you know, and, you know, the, whoever, you know, hears this, um, just think about, you know, you, we all know our signs. But when I tell you the house that this transformation happens in for you, um, you know, just think of how it starts in January, ends in December, and how you've transformed in that area of your life, and or what you think it means for you. So for Aries, it's the 10th house where the conjunction happened. Um, so this is going to transform um, their professional life, their career. And, you know, it's sort of like COVID touched everything. Because, because there's nothing that wasn't touched or restricted because of it. So, you know, a lot of people are working from home. That's a transformation, you know. But, but for Aries, it would be um, their 10th house. A lot of times what you think, what your thoughts are in January are not going to be the way you think or feel in this area of your life in December. So Aries could be changing jobs. Um, the 10th house is where you're going. It's your future. So where you thought you were going in January, you're probably not going to be there or going there, or maybe you, it's delayed, you know, as of December. Yeah, I'm thinking of my sister. <laughs> makes okay, sense. she's an Aries. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so it's the future public standing reputation. It's it's your career and your professional life. So somehow that's trans Air for Aries. Their professional life is transforming this year. It also rules the father or a parental figure. So maybe you've had to give your parents more attention or your father more attention this year, or it could even be that you and your father weren't getting along in the beginning of the year, but your relationship was transformed and you found a way to get along. So it's a transformation. It can be, in, it can look a lot different. You know, there can be many different places that it touches in your life, but in general for Aries, it would be professional career and the father. Um, for Taurus, it's actually their belief system, the ninth house. And you can Google the houses so you can see, you know, if you want to get more about what's transforming. So for Taurus, it's the ninth house. It's your belief system. Taurus is the God house. It's religion. It's theological beliefs. Um, and so your beliefs are changing or, you know, and also the ninth house is long distance travel. So there'll be none of that. You know, you're going to be challenged. I'm sure for a lot of Tauruses, they thought they were going somewhere. They didn't go anywhere. That's exactly true. It was on my vision board. I, it was fun. I was talking about this with my friend the other day. We made vision boards like on January 4th. And I like whenever I make them, it's like so divinely inspired. You just like put it, you just put the things out and like all of the words come together and you're like, oh, I guess this is how I feel, you know. Mm -hmm. And mine was just like nature, 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 nature. <laughs> and I was like, I wasn't really getting any inspiration. And then there was one part where I had Sedona and a retreat because I was feeling like I wanted to get, take my kids there and to Grand Canyon and stuff. And it was in January and I kept not planning the trip. It was going to be for spring break. And I was like, why do I keep not planning this trip? And then I actually sat down one day and was like, I'm going to plan the trip today. And I just couldn't focus. And I, and I told my son, my younger son, and he's like, yeah, I had a bad feeling about that trip. I don't think it's going to happen. And I said, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen either. That's so weird, but I'm not going to force it because it's not happening. So I, I literally took it off my, off my vision board. And, um, and then, you know, a couple of weeks later we had shutdown. So if I had bought the tickets, it would have been a pain. So it all worked out, but it was, it was exactly that. It was a desire for travel, but oh well. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. That, that you have really, that's, a, that's very, um, it's almost like you have a cord to being warned by the universe. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. cool. That is cool. You know, so, you know, for Taurus, it's, 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 it could be religious transformation. You started the year in one religion, you end the, the year in another religion. I mean, it could be that. It's a transformation in the ninth house, which rules religion, philosophy, higher learning. 
Um, we could go, you know, Taurus may go back and learn things that they wanted to learn for a while, but it was going to be a pain. But this could be the year where they where they learn something that they've always wanted to learn. Yeah, right before the shutdown, I was like, there's this class I want to take, but it's like a whatever, six week commitment and it's whatever, you know, it wasn't that much money, but I was like, how am I supposed to commit to the time? And then uh, my friend's like, well, if we're shutting down, like we're supposed to be shutting down, maybe. And so that was the one thing I anchored me all, you know, every week I had that class to look forward to during that six weeks. <laughs> so. that's, that's, that, that's perfect. And that was a transformation. That's fabulous. So for, for the ninth house is, um, it's also foreigners and long distance journey. So we talked about it, travel pretty much for Taurus. But, and for a lot of people, like I said, this really does yeah. from the COVID. So for Gemini, it's the eighth house. So Gemini's are transforming spiritually this year, you know, where they may have been um, a little uh, cynical about the spirit world or spirit, you know, now they're starting to believe, now they're starting to believe that there has to be a bigger force, you know, out there in charge. I consider astrology, I consider astrology God's toolbox, you know, you pull out your hammer when you need your hammer or your Jupiter when you need your Jupiter. But um, for Gemini's, their eighth house of spirituality is being transformed. Also, the eighth house rules other people's money. So they may um, be transforming in the way they earn a living. Or, because, you know, when you do a service for someone and they pay you, you know, they may be transforming in the way that they um, get revenue from other people. And it's also, I have to mention it, the eighth house rules sex. So Gemini's may be having some kind of sexual transformation this year. You know, maybe, you know, they're, they're looking at it in a different way, you know, or whatever. Um, it, you have to know what it means for you. So for cancer, it's the seventh house. And the seventh house is relationships. It's legal affairs. Um, so your relationships, it's actually marriage and partnerships. It's committed relationships, the seventh house. So it's who you need. So partnerships, marriage, relationships, close associates, too your peers at work, all that is transforming. Um, but you'll really notice that I think in your long-term relationship, somehow in 2020, that your marriage or somehow is transforming in, into something else, which will probably be better in 2021. You know, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. It's just nobody wants to take a whole year to transform, but that's what this year is about. And then there was probably a hiccup, especially for them, during that Venus retrograde that I was talking about in May and June. Mm -hmm. um, so for Leo, it's the sixth house. That's day-to-day -day work. That's a transformation in their day-to-day -day work. Um, for Leo, also the sixth house is health matters. The sixth house rules are health. So it could be, you know, Leo's had to transform, meaning that they thought they were gonna have some kind of operation or medical attention at the beginning of this, and they had to put it off. <coughs> You know, or if they're in the healthcare profession, that's complete transformation. You know, if Leo's in the healthcare, if they're healthcare workers or anything to do with health, um, and also day to day work, that's where their transformation and also their obligations. So, especially with Saturn and Bob, Leo may have found themselves more obligated to others than they normally are in 2020. Um, but, you know, after December 21st, you know, it's going to pay off whatever you work through. For Virgo, it's the fifth house. So this is uh, this is just like dating relationships and romance and children. The fifth house rules children. So for Virgo, somehow their relationship this year is transforming with their children. You know, um, maybe somebody's, one of the kids is getting older, stop treating like a baby. And the Virgos say, well, I better start treating them like more of an adult. They're growing up, you know. And so the fifth house the transformation is romance, creativity, children, vacations, transformation. So maybe you thought you were going to fly to England and now you're taking an RV into the woods, you know. <laughs> it's transformation. Also talents. Um, so through, through the uh, staying at home, the quarantine, they might learn talents that they had. They might pick up a guitar because they have more time on their hands. It's how they express themselves. For Libra, it's their fourth house. So their home environment is changing. Okay, now, like I said, everything sort of you can stem it from, from COVID because here's a Libra with this conjunction in their fourth house and all of a sudden they're stuck at home, you know? So uh, the Libra is the fourth house. It's home, family, immediate environment, and the mother. The fourth house rules the mother. 
So somehow, you know, or maybe they decided to get the renovations done this year since they're home, you know, but their home, family, and immediate environment is, is transforming. For Scorpio, it's the third house. So Scorpios will be using the media more. Um, the third house is brothers and sisters. Their relationships with their brothers and sisters is transforming. The way they communicate is transforming. Um, and also around their neighborhood, they might be getting much more involved in their neighborhood. So if that's what the third house rules. It's mostly about communication. So in Scorpio's life, the way they communicate is transforming this year. For Sagittarius, it's all about the money. The second house, just like the America's chart, because America has Sagittarius rising. So for Sagittarians, it's the second house. So their money is transforming. Um, it could look rough for them. They, you know, they could be scared, but if they work through it, they're going to find they can make just as money and much money in what they transform to than what they were doing. You know, Capricorn doesn't make any and it does not make this transformation easy. But what it does, Pluto allows you to do is find new ways of doing things um, to keep yourself afloat. You know, and I see that a lot with um, small businesses, the way that they're innovating in order to keep themselves afloat till this is over. Yeah. You know, so Sagittarians, their finances, you know, maybe they're saving when they weren't, they didn't invest when they were gone, but their money is really going through a transformation and the way that they handle it. Good old Capricorn, it's their first house, you know, because the conjunction was in Capricorn. So Capricorns are going through a very personal transformation. I would venture to say that a Capricorn, the person that they were in January is not going to be the same person that they'll be in December because it's such a personal transformation. They're changing personally. So, you know, they're learning what, what you know, self-confidence, um, you know, is a big thing with Capricorns. They have to know they're good enough and they, they might be getting out there and saying, you know, yes, I'm good enough. Also, um, you know, it's just the way they express themselves, how they want to be seen. Um, their personality. It's also the way you dress, it's the way you look. Capricorns could change their whole look in 2020. You know, it's, it's a transformation of you personally. It's um, really your outlook on life, it's your appearance. So, um, and especially when it ends on December 21st, I can see like a Capricorn in like khakis and a gray shirt in January, and then like light blue pants and a purple shirt in, in December. <laughs> it's just a transformation. For Aquarius, it's the 12th house. So that's going to um, task Aquarians with fighting their fears and transforming them. Really, Pluto's going to make them dig deep. Like, should I be afraid of this? Maybe everything happens for a reason. So the 12th house asks us to find a higher reason for everything, you know, um, to see the forest for the trees. Um, so, and, and it, brings, it, it brings up our fears, the 12th house. Um, it's very misunderstood because really once you master the 12th house and get to that higher level of thinking and raise your vibration, you're above the fray. And the little stuff, the mundane stuff, just doesn't bother you as much anymore. So it's a real nice transformation for Aquarians to fight their fears, just go for it, and um, have a lot of self-confidence because the 12th house is what we hide. So sometimes an Aquarius might secretly not be confident. But this year is asking them to transform into that confident person. And finally, good old Pisces, it's in their 11th house. So the 11th house rules groups, associations, clubs. It, it rules your friends. It's actually the house of manifestation, also the 11th house. So relationships with friends and groups is going to change for Pisces this year, transform. Um, so, you know, like I said, it, it, because of the quarantine, you know, maybe Pisces, their group meetings are now virtual and they'll continue them to be virtual after the end of December 21st. Um, so for Pisces, it's really a transformation with association groups, clubs, they should join one if they've always wanted to and didn't, they should. Um, friends, hopes, goals, and wishes, also community activities and business contacts. So there's a transformation in their social life. That's the big keyword for the 11th house is social life. So that's transforming for them this year. And it's also people who need them. They might be on, um, people might, might access them more because Pisces are the listeners. So they can listen to all their friends, you know, 
Um, and so more friends might reach out to them this year. It might be a transformation um, for them to realize that they can be helpful to their friends. So that's really what the conjunction means for everybody in mm -hmm. 2020. And once we get over this Mars retrograde hump, um, and then the December 21st sort of sort of the realization of the great transformation. Um, I think we're all going to be, be you know, better off for the challenge of it, you know, and, um, and America, by the way, these planets do move on. So once they hit Aquarius, they're pretty much not hurting. Um, they're still in the United States second house because a little bit of the second house is ruled by Aquarius, but it's going to be, okay, now we can see the forest for the trees. You know, it's not going to be this, what am I going to do now? I can't do this. It's going to be, okay, now we see there's a way to do it. And those things will be brought to light for us. So, pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yeah. If you guys could see uh, Diane, when she does her work, she's got like 50 books that she has around her, and she always is flipping back and forth between pages and, and resources. It's like pretty yeah. impressive to see you in, right. in, in, the, in your zone. Yeah, it's, it's, well, I wanted to be prepared. So once, because as long as I'm prepared, I had a boss once say to me, I said, aren't you nervous to talk in front of people? She said, not as long as I'm prepared. Yeah. So she had a good, that was good advice, you know. Because yeah, I would go sit in your kitchen and, you know, you'd just be surrounded by all these, all these different books. And yeah. <laughs> thank so, you for doing the research. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. You yeah. Know? Um, you know, the Mars, the Mars retrograde also, um, I'll go real quick through this, for Aries, they're going to be a little more frustrated. And this is starting September 9th? Yes. For this and that's what, like, when me, when me and Diane were talking about when to set this up, she's like, as long as it's before September 9th, because she didn't want to mess with it. Right. I just like, <laughs> you know, if I don't have to, we could do it. You, know? <laughs> you have to do it during a retrograde. You have to do it. Right. But if you don't, you can avoid it. You're probably saving yourself some grief. Right, exactly. <laughs> so the Mars, so, so, yeah, you're doing the Mars retrograde, and then you're going to go through the signs, like, and how it impacts us. Yes. Okay. I'll be quicker. With no, whatever, it's fine. I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go through the signs. I'm going to go through where the Mars retrogrades affects you. Okay. The September 9th to November 14th Mars retrograde coming up in six days. So for Aries. If it's going to make their fuse a little short. They're going to be more frustrated than usual. They're just going to feel that Mars aggression and frustration, but they, they have to learn patience. Um, for Taurus, it's going to be the 12th house. So Taurus might be more apt to, to dredge up some fears, you know, or they may be frustrated, um, you know, and they might only, you know, alone, because the 12th house rules the time when you're alone. So with Mars there, you know, Taurus, don't overthink it. You know, don't let it get to you during the retrograde. Realize that during the retrograde, you know, Mars is trying to push your buttons a little bit, you know, so just don't let it. And the same with the Aries, their first house, it's who they are. So they're going to be more apt to overreact um, during a retrograde. So for Gemini, it's the 11th house. Don't let your friends get on your nerves. You might want to, you know, they, your friendships and your relationships are going to be affected you know, when I, I mean social life, really, I mean friendships, associations, stuff. That's going to be frustrating for you, but just realize there's something to learn in all these areas from this, from this retrograde. So just don't let it bother you. Just say, you know, I know Mark is retrograde in my 11th house, so I'm not going to let you bother me today. You know, just, just let it go. Um, for cancer, it's the 10th house, so they could have a career. Um, something in their career might not go fast enough or be frustrating for them. Um, for Leo, it's the ninth house. So, you know, they, they might want to travel and they can't, you know, there's not going to be any travel, especially for Leo <laughs> during this retrograde. So they just have to have belief that things happen for a reason and, and, and keep hope, you know, um, Virgo, it's the eighth house. So their spirituality, you know, they might want to, Mars is also action. So they might want to go back and, and study something in the uh, OCCULT, the occult practices. I said that to someone once and they went, I'm not joining the cult. And I was like, no, no, I not want to do it. So the eighth house is spirituality. It's other people's money. Um, they might not. Have, it's also, I said it before, it's the house of sex. So Virgos might, might not be getting the sex they want to get during a Mars retrograde. <laughs> you know, it's sort of simple. For Libra, it's a seventh house. So there could be, um, that's 
marriage partnerships. So there could be something you have to go over and talk about and you want to hit it head on. You want to talk about it. That way you can get over it. Um, but communication is key and not in anger, no anger, no arguments, no fights, just good communication because Libras are going to want to fight with their partner during a Mars retrograde or they just might be in a mood, you know. Um, for Scorpio, it's the sixth house, so that's day-to-day -day work, health. You know, the Mars retrograde is probably asking Scorpio to take better care of their health. You know, Scorpio could say, oh, you know what, I'm gaining a few pounds, you know, and this is bringing it out. So maybe I want to change my diet. Maybe I'm not exercising enough. You know, Mars retrograde for Scorpio will show them the things in their life uh, that they have to improve upon to improve their health. For Sagittarius, it's the fifth house of relationships, um, vacations. So they're going to be restricted. Sagittarians love to travel anyway. They like to go everywhere, do everything. And they love to get out and do things. So they have to realize that they're going to be restricted. It's going to frustrate them. They're ready to travel. They haven't been able to travel all year. But you got to get over this last home. Also, children is the fifth house. So Sagittarians might be a little testy with their children. I mean, look, your kids are home all the time. They should be in school. What's going on? So stuff like that. <clears throat> for Capricorn, it's the fourth house. So for Capricorn, the Mars retrograde is going to be in their home, family, immediate environment. And they're just going to be a little testy at home. And also Capricorns want to be careful um, not to let projects snowball at home. Meaning that, you know, oh, I wanted to fix this, but then they get so into it that they break something else, you know. So take it easy with the tasks at home. Don't obsess about everything you have to get done at home during the like, retrograde. Um, you should wait till November 15th, really, to do the projects. And I'm yelling at my husband constantly about that. So for Aquarius, it's the third house. So it's how they communicate. They're going to be misunderstood because it's the talk. It's how they talk and communicate. They'll march retrograde. You know, they'll say something like, I can't believe you did that. But they didn't mean it that way. And they'll be misunderstood. So Aquarians have to be extra careful to be patient, think about what they want to say, and say it so that they could be understood correctly. And for Pisces, it's the second house of money. So Pisces may see or may think that during this retrograde um, that their money is going backwards. But the good news is when this planet goes forward on November 15th, it's going to go forward for everybody in these houses. So Pisces, don't get discouraged if you think your money is going in the wrong direction. You know, it's it's it and be as frugal as you can during the retrograde. And then after the retrograde is over, you know, you could get money that you've been expecting. Money may be held up. And then when the planet goes direct on November 15th, boom, here it comes. So, you know, realize that things are being held up for a better outcome after. So anything that you can't get done in any area of your life from September 9th to November 14th, that holdup is absolutely for a better outcome. And after November 15th, Karen, I tell you, I'm so hopeful for 2021. Yeah, is the election going to be a debacle? I think so. But, um, but we are out of the woods, um, out of the real bad woods on November 14th. And then on, on December 21st really starts we will have transformed and really starts a wonderful, wonderful year in 2021. <laughs> that, that's a promise. Anyway, that's promising. That is, I mean it when I say very, very, um, my, a lot of reason for optimism that when that conjunction happens December 21st, it's going to allow us to turn all this stuff around and move forward. Yeah. So just like tuck that away in your heads and just know, just hang on. It'll be clearer after November 14th and even better after December 21st. So. That's, that's exactly, that's right. Thank you for saying that because there's, there's, um, and you're going to feel it too. When Mars goes retrograde, you know it. Every time Mars, and, and the last time Mars went retrograde, uh, Vladimir Putin was all over the news. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he took over Crimea. But now, you know, I left because I'm like, oh, when's Putin coming on the news? And lo and behold, they're saying you tried to poison that guy or something. <laughs> I was like, well, there he is. <laughs> you know, um, you know, they're saying that Russia meddles in our elections. You know, every time Mars goes retrograde, and I know, I believe Vladimir Putin's a Libra. So every time Mars goes retrograde, um, he is in our face in one way or another. So expect to hear a lot about him the next couple months too. Crazy. 
And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> well, you did great. That's so much information. And whenever, you know, talking to Diane, like, you know, there, there's only so much that my brain can retain. I, I just take notes as best as I can. And then I'll be like, okay, let me just look up the meaning of this house and, and whatever. But <laughs> well, Karen, I, want, I can't thank you enough. And you recorded this. Yeah. So that's the beauty of it. People can go back and hone in on their sign and, and see what it means for them. And they can even do Google research of the house. Right. Talk about, because, you know, I used keywords, but there's so much more. There's a lot more involved with each house too. And let me just take this opportunity. You have been such a good friend and actually a mentor for me since I've known you. Um, you really get me going and I appreciate you <laughs> um, so much. And I can't thank you enough, really. I know. I'm so grateful for you too. It's like, uh, you know, we, we met back in whatever, 2013 or 14, because I had that meetup group down in Manahawken and mm -hmm. we got connected through that. And uh, through- It was meant to be though, because I found out about it in my hair dress. Yeah, the the my friend Deb. Right. Yeah, and then and then you were going to come to my thing too, and I don't know, it just all worked out. So, yeah. I, and all of the relationships that we've you know we've each made you know made as a result of being friends with each other and absolutely, you know, it's really cool. Yeah, and it's like a sisterhood. Like I consider you and and Maura and Anne and Julianne Kalahar and just all the practicing people that I've met, just wonderful women. Um, really like a sisterhood it's lovely yeah, i know it's been a, it's been awesome connection and the ripple effect and all of that so i just know your business is going to be unbelievable in terms of <laughs> yeah yeah diane was looking at ahead of my chart back a few months ago and and i was like i don't know maybe the town will pass the thing and i'll get in by the end of the summer and, and all this stuff and she kept saying uh maybe after november things will be good you know like so i i had that tucked away so when things fluctuated with the town and whatever i'm just like that's cool diane told me we're good you know yeah and that, that helps because it empowers you not to say why didn't this happen this should have happened but to say you know it's going to happen when it's supposed to right yeah you know, the universe has timing of its own and it doesn't always line up with ours and it's amazing having people who who have different abilities that come together because also during that time when i needed to move up here and i was anxious to move up here but i couldn't force it to happen you and joanne would kind of could like get together when you were together for whatever reason you're like what do you get about karen what do you get about karen and you guys both got the same imagery feelings and and dates yeah. And, and Joanne's is coming from spirit and yours is coming from like looking at the, the charts. So it's like so cool. It is. So, it's cool stuff. It's so yeah, and, and Diane has, you know, has gotten pretty popular and has a long waiting list, um, I think, or not, but like, you know, you're a little bit booked out. But if, you know, you wanted to get a chart done by her, you could reach out to her. You know. sure. Yeah. And also, I would give anything to be on your Reiki table. <laughs> I may have to take a trip to New Jersey just for that. Yeah, yeah, anytime you come this way, <laughs> you're welcome to. Your Reiki sessions are just invigorating, they're enlightening. I've, I've never felt better than after a Reiki session with you. Oh, that was, that was very nice. Thanks. <laughs> I know, I like doing it, so I appreciate it. I mean, everybody's saying mutual admiration society here, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's nice. But so thanks for coming on here, and thanks for those that joined us. And Ma Maura says thank you that she feels the same way. So she's oh. listening to us, so All right. thank you, Maura. And uh, so we'll talk to you guys whenever. Let us know if you have any questions and we'll go back and look in the comments if there's anything um, that we can answer for you. So. All right. Thanks, Diane. We'll see Thanks, you later. Karen. Take care. <laughs> Love and light. Love you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.